Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth and last video uh, covering chapter four of your operating systems textbook. In this video we'll cover chapter four, section six of your operating systems textbook, Linux tasks and threads. We'll take a look at the task structure, the Linux process and thread model, the overview of Linux threads, and Linux namespaces. This is going to be a very quick video. Um, it's a fairly short section in your book, but I would definitely recommend reading it very carefully, probably a couple times. Make sure that you're very familiar with these concepts before you move on. Use this video to just sort of point to the important parts that I want you to spend more time on. Now, a process or a task in Linux is represented by a task struct data structure, which includes various pieces of information about the task. The state, which is the execution state of the process, is it executing, ready, suspended, etc. Uh, scheduling information, which is needed by Linux to schedule the process. Processes in Linux can be normal or real-time, and they have a priority. Real-time processes are scheduled before normal processes, and within each category, relative priorities can be used. A counter keeps track of the amount of time a process is allowed to execute. We have identifiers. Uh, which is a unique process identifier and also has user and group identifiers. The group identifier is used to assign resource access privileges to a group of processes. Uh, another thing contained in the task struct is the address space, which is just the virtual address space available to the task. Take a look in your book at pages 182 and 183 for the full list of information in the task struct data structure and explanations of each type of information. This diagram shows the Linux process state model, which has a lot in common with our uh, five state uh, process diagram from chapter three. Now in this case, something to pay attention to is the ready and executing states are kind of lumped into a single running state. So when we're talking about Linux, when we mention the running state, we're actually talking about both the ready and executing state. Um, the running process is either executing or it's ready to execute. The interruptible state is a blocked state in which the process is waiting for an event, such as the end of an I.O. An IO operation, the availability of a resource, or a signal from another process. There's another blocked state, which is called uninterruptible. The difference between the interruptible state is that in this state, a process is waiting directly on hardware conditions and therefore won't handle any signals. The stopped state indicates that a process has been halted and can only resume by positive action from another process. So a process that's being debugged could be, could, uh, could be put into the stopped state. Finally, we have the zombie state, in which case a process has been terminated, but for some reason it still has its task structure in the process table. This can occur for child processes, where the entry is still needed to allow a parent process to read its child's exit status. And once the exit status is read via the wait system call, the zombie's entry is removed from the process table and uh, that's said to be reaped. So just to give a brief overview of what we're talking about with Linux threads, uh, it's important to understand that traditional Unix systems support a single thread of execution per process, while modern Unix systems typically provide support for multiple kernel-level threads per process. Uh, User-level threads are mapped into kernel-level processes, and a new process is created by copying the attributes of the current process. Now, this new process can be cloned so that it shares system resources such as uh, files, signal handlers, and virtual memory. But although clone processes are that are part of the same process group can share the same memory space, they can't share the same user stacks. So a clone call, for example, creates a separate stack space for each process. Finally, we'll briefly talk about Linux namespaces. A namespace enables a process to have a different view of the system than other processes that have other namespaces. So one of the overall goals here is to support the implementation of control groups, also called C groups, uh, which is a tool for lightweight virtualization. So what we're gonna do is provide a process or a group of processes with the illusion that they're the only processes on the system. 
This way we can keep various processes in different namespaces from interfering with each other during runtime. And finally, this is a list of the standard namespaces that are currently in use in Linux. Uh, please take a look at pages 185 and 186 in your textbook to get a full discussion of Linux namespaces and how these things are going to work on the operating system level. Uh, and that does it for Chapter 4 uh, in our videos. Um, the next video will be the first in Chapter 5 on concurrency.